Once again, it's on What's Up World. It's your boy Vic XL. This is the Riding Dirty Show, the Riding Dirty Podcast. We bring you what's next right now in hip hop and RB. Also, bridging the gap between hip hop and everyday life. Man, I gotta say one time for our sponsor, Dr. Juice Cleanse.com. Dr. Juice Cleanse is an all natural cleanser that promise, promises to do all kinds of amazing things for your body, like slow down the aging process, like help you lose up to 25 pounds in 10 days, like help eliminate stress. You know what? Every episode, I tell you all the amazing things that Dr. Juice Cleanse can do for you and your body. And tonight is no different because they have been a very, very wonderful sponsor of the show. But what I really encourage you guys to do is find out about the product for yourself. Yes, you can listen to me, and I'm not going to steer you wrong, but I would prefer that you visit drjuicecleanse.com right now and find out about this amazing product. And not only is it an amazing product and does great things, but this product is a great representation of this show because this product is independently and individually owned. It was started by a former hip-hop artist. He goes by the name of Young Loan. Um, man, he started this, this company with his own seed money, and um, he's been doing great things for over the past five years. He would deliver the product to you. He ships the product. He has two shipping areas, whether it's out of Atlanta, whether it's out of Mississippi. And my man does, probably wouldn't even want me to get into all the information. But um, I'm very passionate about um, people when we do our thing. He's an independent business owner, an entrepreneur, and he's definitely doing his thing with this product. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please do me one huge favor, one huge favor, and just visit drjuicecleanse.com, find out about the product, order you some, become a drinker of it, and start living well and cleaning out your body and cleansing your system today. All right, just do that for me. Do that for your boy Vic XL and tell him Vic XL and the Ryan Dirty Show sent you, and I would greatly appreciate it and be indebted. Y'all see, I have my trusted assistant, Miss Adriana. Just wave hey to the people, Adriana. They see you. That's Adriana, and um, she's definitely holding me down. You know, she can't sit still, so I'm sure she'll be moving back and forth periodically. But you know, she said hey, and when she get older, she's gonna drink Dr. Juice Cleanse too. All right, all right. So again, today is July 25th. It is Wednesday, July the 25th, and like always, man, I got to say happy birthday to people that I'm definitely rocking with, so let's get this thing cracking. First and foremost, the first three people I say happy birthday are no longer with us, but you know what? I got to say happy birthday to them. Happy birthday to Hall of Famer, former NFL great, former Chicago Bear, Mr. Walter Payton. Also got to say happy birthday to Mr. Emmett Till. Got to say happy birthday to um, rapper formerly of Trill Family, my man Lil Fat. He was on that song featuring Webby and Lil Boosie. Um, happy birthday to Lil Fat. Got to say happy birthday to model Miss Iman. Iman turns 63 years old today. I had no idea Iman was that old. Happy birthday to West Coast rapper Mac Lethal. Gotta say happy birthday to band gang Lonnie Bands. He's turned 23 years old today. And happy birthday to actress Wendy Rachel Robinson. She's been seen on the Steve Harvey show, Cedric Entertainer show. She's been on a lot of stuff. But Wendy turns 51 years old today. So happy birthday to them. I'm checking out my Facebook page. And I gotta say happy birthday to Miss Jessica McNuckle. And I also got to say happy birthday to my man, Composure John. Both of those are former guests of the Ryan Dirty Show. And if y'all know them, definitely wish them happy birthday. And um, hopefully they had an awesome day. And, um, you know, how we do it. All right. Let me see what we got going on in hip-hop news real quick. 
before I bring you our guest. Hip hop news, man. You know what? It seems like the world is on fire. My man Vic Mensa is is having a little spout with Takashi Six Nine. Now, definitely, that's probably part of the fact that Takashi Six Nine is indirectly represented by my man DJ Academics. But Vic Mensa just released a freestyle. Takashi Six Nine said some things, and Vic Mensa like, you know what, cat? I'm not finna even rap with you. I'm just gonna Spike Lee. Bitch slap you when I see you. So hopefully, you know what? We ain't gonna be seeing no violence. Hopefully, Vic Mensa and um, Takashi Six Nine can come to some kind of resolution. Cause I don't wanna see no violence. But you know, hey man, I don't know. I don't know. Vic Mensa, Takashi Six Nine, we're gonna be watching this thing. And if y'all wanna see one of the funniest beefs going on right now, definitely check out my man Floyd Money Mayweather's Instagram. Check out Fifty Cents Instagram. They are definitely going back and forth. Spilling the tea, telling each other business really, really bad. Like, man, 50 is talking about all the, all the, um, you know what, just check it out, man. He's he's going all in Floyd Mayweather's business. Floyd saying 50 got herpes. 50 is constantly talking about how Floyd beat women, how Floyd pays women. Floyd say 50's broke. I ain't going to lie, man, this has been the most interesting battle on social media this week. I've had all four of my eyes Locked in because these two grown men are going crazy. So, too funny, too funny. Floyd Mayweather, 50 Cent Beef, too funny. Seems like my man Russell Simmons is selling off a lot of his real estate in the middle of all these rape allegations. I'm not sure what that's about. We gonna see. I'm not sure what that's about. You know, I don't know if he's gonna start paying off some of these women. I'm not sure what's going on with Russell, but he is definitely selling off property in the middle of this scandal. So we're going to see what's going on ASAP. All right. Also look for a brand new movie coming out about Queen Latifah. Um, it's going to be a movie about an interracial relationship with the TV of Spencer. So we can definitely, definitely look out for that. Um, it's going to be really, really interesting there. And the last thing I got in hip hop news, um, R. Kelly has a brand new 19 minute song. And he seems to be admitting some of the things that's going on in his sexual accusations and his sexual situation. So, you know, the song is 19 minutes long, like I said. And when you get a chance, check it out. If you got 19 minutes to spare, it's a very interesting song. Um, I ain't going to lie. I listened to it. 19 minutes is just too long for me to listen. But, you know, hey, man, R. Kelly had a lot to say. So y'all check it out and y'all let me know if y'all think R. Kelly is admitting to some of the stuff he did. Like, he, he says he abused his ex-wife, Drea Kelly. And the name of the song is I Admit. So, you know, check it out. 19 minutes long. If you got 19 minutes to spare and you want to hear a little bit about R. Kelly, then definitely check it out. The name of the joint is I Admit. And, um... Hey, that's just how R. Kelly is doing it, man. He tired of people chastising him, so I guess he decided to tell the truth and chastise himself via record. All right, so we've given y'all a little hip-hop news. I've definitely told y'all who will celebrate birthdays today. You now know who our sponsors are, and now this is my favorite part of the show where I definitely get a chance to talk and interact and tell the story of people definitely doing their thing in our community. So tonight's show is no different from any other show. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'd like to welcome to the show, Mr. DeVito. How's it going, my G? Hi, right, what's happening, what's happening? Everything going good. How you doing? Man, I'm maintaining, definitely, definitely trying to do my one, two thing. All right, man, let's get this thing started off. The first thing I got to ask you is, the name is DeVito, but the spelling is very, very interesting. How did you go about spelling it, and why did you go about spelling it the way you did? Um, the reason I went about spelling it the way I did because I wanted to, you know, just give everybody a part of me. The first part is dealing with my name, my original name, okay? My first name that my mom gave. Okay? Uh, the second part is based off of a character that I, uh, I did a lot of research on as a young guy, uh, growing up where I grew up. I did a lot of research on him. And his name is Vito. Uh, 
he was a guy of loyalty, so it kind of fit me. So I kind of took that name on and added it together. There you go. Now why I threw a Y in was because I wanted to do something, you know, make it a little extravagant, a little something different than the average. So All right, I got the deal. I definitely, definitely can dig it. And, you know, being different is definitely something very important in this music industry when it's so many people attempting not to be different. All right, so we're going to start from the beginning. I just wanted to ask that question in case I forgot. Let's start from the beginning by you letting the people know where you're from. I'm born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. Dirt, you know. And what was it like for you? I grew up in Atlanta. What was it like for you coming? Sorry, what was it like for you coming up on the South Side? Because you know a lot of people hear a lot about the South Side um, when it comes to hip hop and rap. You know, Two Chainz definitely represented the South Side. Waka Flocka is definitely represented the South Side. Just to name a few. What was it like coming up on the South Side? Uh, coming up on the South Side is you know like uh, anywhere where it's a little uh, a little tough. I think. You got to know how to stand it around. Uh, you going to make friends. You're going to make enemies. You know, same old thing that goes on in everybody's lifestyle. It's really nothing too different. You know, it's just uh, a different vibe. That's it. Uh, we act different. We think different a little bit, but not too much. You know, as long as you know how to stand your ground and you be yourself, then everything else will play out right, you know. So that's how it was growing up on the South. It was it was just really uh, just trying to maintain and be myself, not get caught up. All right, now, and you definitely said a mouthful because even though we're all from the A, different parts of the A, you can tell Southside cats from Southside cats. You can tell cats from Decatur. You can tell cats from the North Side. Like, it's like everybody has their own swag and their own lingo. Yeah, yeah. Everybody do got their own swag and their own lingo. Uh, a lot of people be mistaking it, though. You know, a lot of people be thinking like, oh, uh, you're supposed to talk like a dude from the cave. You're supposed to talk like somebody from the head, you know, just because you're from Atlanta. But we all do have our own, you know, our own type of lingo on each side. We say different words. We move different ways, too, though. All right, so... But, you know, we all the same, though, at the same time, we're Atlanta. That's right. So, it's all the A. At what point in time in your life did you decide that you wanted to pursue music and you wanted to be an artist? Um, That happened when I was 14. I was really about 14, 13, 14, somewhere in there. Uh, watching my dad a lot. Uh, my dad did music. Uh, he was always traveling, always on the road, you know, doing music, dealing with music. He did uh, sound engineering for uh, multiple people. And I always wanted to be on the rapping side because I started seeing like Tupac, and NWA, and Biggie. Then it went from them to Hot Boys. I, you know. Uh, that's when I fell in love with rap. And ever since then, I, I've been, you know, doing my thing. I really didn't get heavy into it until I was uh, 21. That's when I got heavy into it. I got serious. I started trying to do music, you know, getting with different groups, being with different situations and stuff like that, you know. But we still, you know, things didn't work out the way it was supposed to. But, you know, things happen. Uh, I started pushing even hard when I turned uh, 22, right, a year later. Started pushing even harder. And it led me to today just to keep pushing people. And, you know, everything's falling in place. Uh, took a little time, but everything's falling in place now. All right. Um, I, you know what? I got to go back. I got to, because during my monologue, I forgot to say something. And being from the A, I know you definitely know about this place. Did you know Walters closed shop today? Oh, yeah, I heard. I heard. 
Man. I heard about this. That's, uh, that's crazy. Um, you know, Walter's been around for so long. Man. Yeah, everybody from Atlanta knows about Walter. If you from any part of Atlanta, you have bought some Tim's or some Stan Smith's <laughs> or some some something yeah. from Walters. So, and I and I hate to interject in the middle of talking to you, but it just hit me that I didn't do a moment of silence. So, man, a moment of silence for Walters, man. Like, if you're from the A, you're going to miss Walters. Oh, uh, yeah. Most definitely. Walters, <laughs> I can't even tell you how many times I've been shopping once. No doubt. All right. Bought every pack kick as a younger than one. Man, I used to, man, what? Man. All right, I, I ain't going to dwell on Walters, but I had to say that I wouldn't I wouldn't be representing right if I didn't give a moment of silence for Walters. All right, so in being from the South Side and, and, and having a father in the music business and one to rap, um, like, who were some of the influences or who are some of the people that made you say, you know what? I really like what they do. It inspires me and I can do this myself. See, like, uh, like I was saying, um, as a, as a youth, I listened to like Tupac, Biggie, you know, NWA. But as I got a little older, I started listening to hot boys. You know, I used to sneak and listen to stuff like that as a as a youth. But uh, what really inspired me started hearing. Uh, I was inspired by them, but I started wanting to be more. How should I say diverse? Uh, I listened to like Ludacris, you know, uh, <laughs> Ludacris, Ice Cube. I, I was listening to people like that. I started trying to be more diverse in my music. Uh, and what I wanted to do. And hearing these different people really just really made my dream come alive in my in my head at the time. If it sounds straight to you, it made my dream come alive in my head. And um, I knew that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So they, I appreciate them for opening the doors and showing me something and setting up a fire in me. No doubt, no doubt. So, how hard was it for you to get into the game? Because we all tend to say we want to do things, but how hard and how challenging was it for you, especially being an independent artist? I mean, it's, um, you know, some people that work out uh, when they jump right in and they take off, everything just you know, falls in place. Some people, they have to work for, you know, a little bit longer. Uh, and I was one of those people that had to work for a little bit longer. Uh, I've been doing music for a while. Uh, I'm praying with friends, uh, breaking up with them, doing solo things, you know, branching out from them, doing solo. I've been doing music for at least, uh, I want to say seven years. Uh, as far as rapping, I've been doing music for seven years, so... It's not as easy as it seems, but I mean nowadays, you know, uh, it's a lot of different, it's a lot of different networking that open up more doors. So if somebody want to do it, then now is the time to really just, you know, jump at it and try to attack without there. You got all types of social network. You got phone access, internet access to your phone right there in your hand, so everybody sees what's going on. Oh, nowadays is the, now is the time to really just attack it. But um, it's it's not easy. It's not easy. It takes time. But if you really want it, you know, you're gonna go after it regardless. All right. As an independent well, artist, how long it take? No doubt. As an independent artist, because you just mentioned the internet, um, and the internet is definitely a very viable tool, um. Other than the internet, what has been some strong, um, some some strong accesses you've had that has helped you along the way? Uh, really, just kind of you know, knowing people. Really, just going out network. Networking is a real big key. You going out, showing your face, 
mixing and mingling with people, it's more personal than the internet. You know, the internet, you know, everybody can see you, but if somebody actually gets to uh, check out who you are and be able to witness who you are face to face, and it gets more personal. So uh, networking is a major key. Um, doing shows, doing shows, you that's a major part of it. You got to be out there. You got to show people what you can do. You got to showcase what you do, uh, your, your talent, you know. Um, pretty much being in the right place at the right time, too. always being available. Okay. People, uh, I know people got to, you know, live and try to make, do what they got to do on um, any part. But at the same time, you got to really chase what you want to say. So you got to make time for the music. You got to make time for the money. You got to make time for the family or whatever the case may be. But you got to make time for it. And <laughs> if you don't make time for it, then you ain't going to never really, you ain't going to never really get nowhere, you know. So you got to make time for that. All right. That's the main key part of all right, you mentioned networking, and um, as I was doing my research on DeVito, I noticed that you had a chance to attend South by Southwest. You also had a chance to attend the BET Awards. Um, how important is networking outside your market and attending major events do you feel like it is to artists on their grind? Uh, networking and attending major events is a big key thing. It opens up a lot of different doors and opportunities. You meet different people. Uh, you get the chance to do music and collab with different people. It's, it opens up a lot of opportunities, puts you in the right place. So going to all those big events, yeah, uh, <laughs> you may spend a little bit, but going to them is, is worth it. You know, it's worth it. It puts you in the uh, right environment. And that's what you need to be here. That's what you want to do. All right. What's a night like in the studio for DeVito? What are some of your necessities, things you got to have for that studio session? Um, Really just the beat, man. <laughs> as long as the beat keeps coming, that's it. Everything else, everything else made. That's just me. <laughs> That's all I need, man. I don't, I don't, I'm the type that like uh, uh, I'm different. I like a clear session. That's not the easiest way to put it. I like a clear session. Um, I don't really, I don't really like to have a clear session. I like to have a little bit of everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
plan as you build your career gaining fans. Oh, that's simple. That's just remaining, remaining solid, remaining me, being 100 at all times. Uh, you know, just giving them what they want. All right. Now, what projects... Yeah, everybody can respect real. Everybody can respect somebody that's been with them. All right. What projects can... What projects do you have out there? Like, or right now you just focus on singles? or the mixtapes out there? Or do you have a mixtape coming? Like, what's in the works for the veto? Uh, right now, at the moment, I'm just focusing on my two singles that I got out, 24 and uh, One Night. I'm just focusing on those two. But mixtape, yes, that is coming soon. Uh, we got enough to drop two, three mixtapes. But yes, that's coming real soon. It's, it's, it's on the way. But right now, we just on uh, Tear the Streets. We just need two singles. You give them a little something to taste on them. You know what I'm saying? Nah, don't give everything away at once. I, I, you know what? And I agree. I watch artists drop damn near a new song every two weeks. And I'm a firm believer, like, man, sometimes it has to be a slow burn. Sometimes you got to let people know you and and build, just like the radio. The radio play a song a million times to the point we know, we'll be like, I hate that record, but we know that record. And sometimes I feel like man. as an independent artist, you got to sometimes keep hitting them with that same thing until they know it. And um, I like the fact that you're pushing the two records. But what made you go that route? My management, uh, having a good support system, uh, a wide support system, because, you know, I can't sit here and act like I'm just, you know, and I know everything on my own. It's just the team that's behind me, really. The team that's behind me won't, they there for me. They won't just let me make a mistake and just step out of it. You know, they're going to be like, okay, this might be better. Let's try this. Let's try this. It's all about your support system. All right, and that leads me to my last. Uh, right. That leads me to my last question. And and this is really some words of advice that you can give the other artists. How important is the support system? Seconds. And how do you feel like the best way? What's the best way to surround yourself with the proper people for your career? Hmm. Okay. Uh, the best way to surround yourself with you know is to keep yourself away from trouble. Uh, I mean, I know pretty much every rapper that's ever done touched the mic that spit of how real actually either does that or know people that does that. But you can't really put yourself in those types of situations, you know? You got to be smarter than that. You got to kind of not saying fade away from your friends, but you got to know when and where to be at. Because one slip, you know, one slip, man, your situation on the whole and understand it. You know, you can go hang out with them at some places and do things of the sort like that, where it just actually kick me every day, day to day. I know you got to separate yourself from that because, yeah, I mean, <laughs> birds of a feather flock together. Even if you ain't doing it, people are going to All right. So that's the best thing. If you got people that really is on a straight, narrow path, then, yeah, you can do it. You can keep them, and you can make stuff happen from that. All right. Tell me a little bit about the record 24. 24, 24 is just a simple record of grind, 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 grind. That is uh, number one thing that I do. I grind, I hustle, I hustle, I grind. Uh, you know, like Mr. Grind Pages or something like. <laughs> uh, I, that's all I do, man. If you ain't, if you're not hustling, if you're not grinding, then I don't know what you're doing. You're wasting time, really. Wasting it's an opportunity. Uh, 24 is just simply about how many people make each hour. They be doing something to make up the shape. 
Yeah, but it's a little, it's a a good song that can, <laughs> it's a good catchy song that people can catch on to it. But that's that's basically what it's about. It's just about like the grind. All right, and last thing, let the people know how to find you on social media. Was Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Let them know all websites. Let them know how to find you in the World Wide Web. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at uh, underscore the B O D A B Y T O, uh, and you can also find me on SoundCloud at same as that uh, D A B Y T O A B T O. All right, do me one favor, pimp, and introduce this record to the world. Uh, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? This is my hit thing. Right here on the Ride Dirty Show. 
Hey, man. I definitely thank you guys for always supporting. Y'all, please, please, please make sure y'all follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Riding Dirty Radio. That's R I D I N D U R T Y R A D I O. Or make sure on Facebook you go to the Riding Dirty fan page and hit that like button. All right? It's your boy, Big XL, man. I'm out of here. I'll see y'all tomorrow night at 11 p.m. Peace.